welcome to Empower ID 101. My name is Phil Geringer, one of the solution architects here at Empower ID. I have created this series of short training videos to provide you with an administrator's understanding of Empower ID. I have included videos that cover most aspects of Empower ID, from basic concepts to complex configurations and everything in between. Each video has been designed to cover a specific topic or process, so feel free to come back often and refresh your understanding of a particular area you are interested in. This particular video in the series will cover server architecture. EmpowerD server architecture is comprised of three basic types of servers. The first is our SQL meta directory server, which houses our Empower ID meta directory database and does not host any Empower ID processes. The next is our backend application server, also known as a worker role server. It processes automated jobs and system daemons. And finally, our front end interface server, also known as a web role server, serves up the web pages to the end user and processes interactive workflow requests and agent calls. Let's take a look at each of these servers in a little bit more detail. The first server is the SQL Meta Directory server, the heart of the system. The Empower ID Meta Directory is a Microsoft SQL database. It requires SQL 2008 R2 or 2012 SQL with full text indexing active. It's important to have full text indexing active because every search that we do within Empower ID within our user interfaces is going to be a full text index search. Next thing to know about our meta directory is that it is a highly transactional database with the ongoing inventory and security processes <clears throat> that we do. We provide a constant stream of transactions to the database. So regardless of the interactive activity being generated by users, there will always be transactions hitting the database from our security and inventory processes. We support SQL clustering, and we support asynchronous database mirroring and log shipping. Now, we do not support synchronous database mirroring due to the transaction volume that's generated in the system. And finally, connections to the database are by standard Microsoft SQL connection strings. So with those connection strings, you can specify whether you're going to use integrated security. You can put usernames and passwords in for disconnected uh, connectivity. And you can put the various command line parameters to support uh, failover uh, partners and other uh, SQL processing uh, aspects that you want to use. Now let's take a look at our backend worker role server. It's basically the workhorse of this system. The operating system is required to be Windows 2008 R2 or 2012. Now the worker role server will maintain and monitor any long-running jobs and scheduled processes that we utilize in the system. It provides the core processes for Empower ID. We typically will not use this particular server as an end user point to connect to Empower ID. Primarily, this will be an inside the network server, whereas the web server could be placed in a DMZ for isolated external communications. The ports that you need to have open and the connectivity that this worker role server will need to have with your external systems typically means that it needs to be inside your internal network. Now finally, the web role server, the gateway to the user. Once again, we require Windows 2008 R2 or 2012. Now the web role server can be placed in an isolated DMZ network for an external facing Empower ID presence, or it can be placed on the internal network uh, for use by internal users as well. It provides the primary interface point for end users to connect to in order to access the Empower ID user interfaces. 
primary workflow. It also it's also the primary workflow processor for interactive workflows being run by end users. So when a user accesses the web interface on one of our web servers and needs to run a particular workflow, typically we will have the workflow engine hosted on the web role server so that the user can simply uh, run that workflow directly on the local server as opposed to having to go to another server to actually run that process. And if you're using your web server internal to the network, you can also host agent web services, web services for connecting to external managed systems, such as your Active Directory LDAP, Exchange, and Windows. Now, if you were putting this server into a DMZ, then you typically would not have those agent web services active on that system. You would go, you would pass off that processing to the internal servers so that you didn't have to have those ports open on the DMZ itself. Now, server architecture configurations. We allow you to build a redundant and resilient enterprise using Empower AD uh, based on the way that we uh, process and the way that we have our architecture structured. So just to go through a few scenarios, for development and test environments, we support a single Empower AD server that can be provisioned with all of the server roles. So you can have your websites and services, your web role services, your worker role servers, services, and your agent processes all running on the same Empower AD server. Completely valid configuration for uh, small test environments. Next, for smaller production implementations where redundancy is not a concern, the front end and back end processes are split onto separate servers for optimal processing. This is the typical recommended way to do it so that your front end user interface processes are not impacted by the long running and uh, spiking type processes that happen on the back end uh, worker role server. Now next for production implementations where more web processing or redundancy is required, a second front end server can be added. A load balancer is often added as well to provide seamless load balancing to the application. Now for large production implementations where full server redundancy is desired or where more processing is needed, a second backend server and SQL clustering or mirroring can be added. And finally, for very large or global production implementations where additional processing or geographically diverse processing is required, Empower ID supports a full N plus one tiered architecture. So you can add as many servers as you want to either the front end or the back end. We support communication zoning so that you can place Empower ID servers in a, uh, a separate data center, say over in a, a globally uh, disconnected location, and then any remote access that it needs to have, such as Active Directory, Domain Controller access, Exchange access, Windows File Server access, other application access, uh, can be directed to a local resource instead of coming back across the WAN and accessing it at the, uh, the primary data center. So as you can see, the EmpowerID server architecture is designed to provide maximum flexibility and extensibility to allow you to easily build out the right implementation for your environment. Internet information services. You can't run Empower ID without it. With our Empower ID architecture, we leverage Microsoft's IIS to manage our server-based processes. Basically, anything that happens with Empower ID is passed off to the IIS stack on the Empower ID server for processing. Through the use of web services and application pools, we distribute our application processes across multiple worker threads within the IIS stack to provide that optimal processing that you desire. Our EmpowerID Windows services serve as traffic cops to direct the workflows, jobs, and processes to the appropriate application pool for processing. And then we let IIS take care of managing the worker threads, processor, and the memory. 
because Microsoft has proven that they are very adept at managing server resources uh, from a, a web server point of view. So we just allow them to do it. Now, the IIS application pools that we use for Empower ID are the following. We have our Empower ID Exchange Services application pool, which manages all exchange-related requests, as well as requests that might need to be run under identity that is different from that of other services. We have our Empower ID SQL Web Services, which manages all SQL over WCF traffic. We have our Empower ID Workflow Web Services, which manages all traffic related to workflow requests made to Empower ID. Our Empower ID Web Services is an, an application pool that we use for a catch-all for any other WCF service calls that need to be performed. Our Web Service Garden application pool manages any Empower ID processes that need to scale based on load by spooling up multiple worker processor threads to distribute the load and provide high availability. And finally, our Empower ID application pool manages all of our Empower ID service provider traffic for the Empower ID web application, along with any click once installer requests. And our final application pool has multiple applications associated with it, and it's our Empower ID IDPs. That's short for Identity Providers. And the applications that are supported by this application pool is our Web IDP Forms application, web application, which handles identity providers that do not require special settings. For instance, all of our OAuth traffic, Open ID traffic, our own native forms traffic, and Empower ID's internal authentication provider and remote identity providers. Then there's the Web IDP Smart Card application, which handles any of our smart card authentication requests. Our Web IDP Windows application disables other authentication methods and only enables Windows authentication. And then our Web IDP WS Federation web application does no authentication, but internally handles packet traffic sent by WS Federation service providers. Now the core Empower ID services that we utilize, there's basically two of them. We have our Empower ID web role. Now this service, along with our worker role service, have no inbound connections so we don't listen on any ports or require any port bindings. Uh, we re it's required on all Empower ID web servers, and the web role service is used for processing Empower ID web service garden, SQL web services, Empower ID web services, and workflow web services. The service hosts jobs that perform the following tasks in Empower ID. It does escalation, performs heartbeat checks for, for the workflow service, and provides event publication and subscription. Now our Empower ID worker role <coughs> is the service that uh, requires IIS and is used for processing Empower ID web service garden uh, requests, which is used for all of its worker process functions. The worker role service hosts jobs that perform tasks such as RBAC service and execution runtime and all of our daemon services. So basically any of our automated processes that may be long running processes and would require additional um, additional uh, worker threads to be uh, spawned to process the work, we'll use that web service garden. Now we have some specialized Empower ID services that are only installed on a server in the event that you need to use these particular processes. We have our radius service, which is used to provide radius authentication for routers, switches, and other radius compliant devices. Our LDAP service, which is used to provide LDAP virtual directory authentication and data services for exposing Empower ID meta directory data and data in connected directories as a single unified LDAP directory with a flexible schema. This is not used for active directory communication, but just if we're going to utilize Empower ID as a virtual directory. And then finally, our Empower ID reverse proxy. This service is used to provide single sign on and authorization for users accessing an organization's, an organization's web applications. The reverse proxy service stands in front of the web app and <clears throat> services and user requests. In each case, 
The requests are intercepted and access is authorized by Empower ID role-based and attribute-based authorization policies. So finally, the identities that we use for our application are of two main types. We have our service and app pool identities. And with the exception of the Exchange IIS application pool, which needs to be an Exchange administrator because of some limitations with Exchange processing, the identities that are used by our Empower ID window services and our IIS application pools do not need to be privileged accounts. They can be standard domain users with DBO access rights to our Empower ID database. We then have our agent identities, which are used for the various system agents that are assigned within the Empower ID configuration screens and utilize vaulted passwords that are encrypted. These accounts are the ones that have the specific privileges needed for the systems connect to. So for instance, the proxy account that we would use to connect to an Active Directory will be one of those agent identities. It will not be used on an external Windows service or IIS application pool. It will simply be entered into the, into the Empower ID application connection itself uh, for use to connect to uh, Active Directory domains. And then there's our Windows service uh, Windows hosted service identity, which is used to connect to any Windows servers for purposes of uh, creating file shares and such. So in summary, Empower the EmpowerID server architecture is designed to offer a robust platform providing an N plus one tiered architecture to allow for a wide range of deployment scenarios from simple deployment environments to distributed global management. We utilize Microsoft's standard SQL deployment practices and connectivity for consistent management of our meta directory database in coordination, in coordination with existing SQL maintenance processes. And IIS management of all EmpowerID processes for consistent configuration and management. And finally, a secure service and IIS identity architecture, which does not require highly privileged access to be exposed. Well, thanks for watching this Empower ID 101 presentation on our server architecture. Come back later for additional videos on other topics.